Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather, and this update, we've got a very active setup over the next seven days as spring storm season really starts off in high gear. So who all gets the severe weather and who gets just the heavy rain? We're gonna break this down in this update. Good morning, everyone. This is your Tuesday, March the 15th update. I appreciate everyone out there that tuned into my live coverage last night over the Dallas-Worth Metroplex that dumped that lot of hailstones in and around the next metroplex the wiley area rock wall had numerous reports of golf ball size hail we could have had our first uh tor tornado up here in fannin county by leonard the national weather service is be assessing the damage but appears to be the first uh, tornado of the season for north texas but that same system continues to push off to the east it dived southeast over the night over the nighttime hours dumped some heavier rain into eastern texas portions of houston now it's taking a beeline through Louisiana. It's off the coast of Into Mobile, and we did have some kind of water spouts. Mainly these uh, tornadoes or type of water spouts. These tornado warnings have been mainly offshore uh, this morning. But yeah, they're bringing some heavier storms uh, in and around the Mobile area, heading towards the Panhandle of Florida. And then yes, they have another slight risk for severe weather. That won't be until the e evening hours, but it's going to be mainly a wind threat as this heavier convective banding continues to push off towards uh, the southeast. While we uh, look up here into the northwest, we still continue with our atmospheric river inundating portions of Seattle, uh, down here into Salem. There's even some rain down here in uh, Northern California, even Sacramento, guys. So that is some definitely some beneficial rain. I mean, California started off with their driest uh, driest start of the year in almost 40 years so they will take every bit of drop of rain that they get out there and uh, some of this uh, is going to be transferring over to some snow into the interior regions and that's actually going to be our second setup uh, that's going to be dirt dr uh, diving down through the Rockies and bringing actually more snow and could be some upslope slow snow by Thursday time frame for the Rockies back into uh, uh, Denver but let's take a look at the temperatures uh, today because there's plenty of warmth. I mean, are the, all the Arctic air has gone bye-bye last week and it's been replaced with well above average temperatures of a good 10, 15. Some of these areas are upwards to 20 and 25 degrees above average back into Montana, into uh, North Dakota here and plenty of warmth over the Ohio Valley and to the northeast so uh yeah all those some of those record low temperatures <laughs> experience that's a distant memory now as the you know we got well above average uh temperatures and i really see much of the northeast staying above average for the foreseeable future but down to the south here's that same system this is that bowling ball trough that went over texas yesterday now it's heading off into the southeast that's bringing all the instability uh, for them and all the heavier rain and some of these could be on the severe side but it's mainly uh, gonna be a wind threat and just some heavier storms uh, that are, that are going to be uh, traversing across because you can see the setup this looks to be an overnight setup and over towards uh, Tampa getting into St. Petersburg back into Orlando and to Clearwater the main setup for this one it would be your damaging winds there's a, there's a little bit of a tornado threat, but not much. Again, with these little very, very isolated spin-ups uh, that could produce an isolated tornado or two is definitely not out of the question. But the main the main impact from these particular storms is going to be your uh, damaging uh, wind threat. And you can actually see the radar by the time we get into uh, Wednesday, you're kind of the overnight into the morning hours on Wednesday. There's those storms traversing into the Panhandle, getting into Central Florida, uh, back into Georgia, getting in portions of the Carolinas by then, getting into uh, Alabama, into the Tennessee Valley with some of those uh, stronger storms as these continue to push up the coast. And by Thursday morning, the 17th, we've got those rain showers uh, heading into uh, North Carolina, into Virginia, and just off the coast here and they will continue uh riding up the coast into the northeast but really because until they kind of fizzle out uh, there's not much left after it gets up to the northeast but then by thursday yes we have that same system that's uh, giving all the rain uh this morning and the pacific northwest is going to be diving down in through the rockies again and that's going to bring a little bit more lift back into uh 
uh, portions of Texas that's going to be bringing yet another round of uh, severe weather for them. And just to the northwest of there, there's definitely going to be some colder air aloft that's going to bring, bring in some snow. And some of this could be some little bit upslope snow for uh, the Rockies back into Denver. So I think some of these could actually overperform. It's not out of the question. That's why March is your snowiest month in Colorado. You get these types of setups and these setups can produce some big snowstorms. I'm not looking at anything drastic, but you know, the three to four to seven, you know, six inches they're talking about right now, I think it could be just a tad bit, a little bit higher than that as this surface low really starts to deepen and just to the northwest of there, you're talking that heavier snow will be starting to break out on a Thursday afternoon uh, time frame. And the, the GFS is not uh, qu quite as bullish with this setup. It has a low, a little low, a little bit uh, deeper. But yeah, it's right over the Texas Panhandle, the far northwest, far uh, far Panhandle of Oklahoma, and into the into the Rockies, back into extreme portions of uh, you know Kansas here. But there's the surface low into the afternoon hours, and I think by the uh, by the evening hours, it's going to bring uh, another round for some marginal storms in and around the Dallas Fort Worth metroplex, extending into a lot of the same areas that really got hit last night from southern Oklahoma into Texarkana, back into the Shreveport area, where we have another marginal risk into portions of New Orleans into Mobile, as that same system will be traversing up the coast. Uh, that I kind of showed you, uh, you know, back into Char back into uh, Charlotte, up here into uh, Richmond, Virginia, and back into Virginia Beach. But all these are just kind of more or less on the marginal risk uh, variety uh, of thunderstorms. But here's the temperatures. Let's take a look at the temperatures by Thursday, because yeah, that's a lot of warmth, guys, for uh, March 17th. I mean, the temperatures are plenty warm down south in the southern plains and to the southeast. Much of the Northeast is experiencing 50 degree high temperatures. I mean, 50s for Iowa, the Dakotas, all the way up to the Canadian border. I mean, that's that's plenty warm uh, for this time of year. Really, the only cold around is where that trough is gonna be digging in. That's gonna be bringing that snow, the intermountain snows to uh, portions of Montana, get into Wyoming, you know, back into uh, Colorado. And that's where the upslope snow could start to uh, come to fruition into the afternoon hours on Thursday. But there's the setup by Friday. So here's, I'm gonna break this down, what the GFS model has right now, because I think it's pretty bullish uh, from what we're looking at as far as the cold air goes. It's got the, the 540 low, 540 line, all the way down into the Texas Panhandle with this deepening surface low of 998. And it's got some very, really heavy snow breaking out into portions of Kansas and to Iowa into Wisconsin and then heavy rain just to the south of there where you got those storms again like over Texas and by Friday Friday morning it's going to be over the, the southeast again with another round for some stronger storms going to be moving back into the into the picture but the latest uh, European model not quite as bullish right it doesn't really grasp uh, the colder air as much it's not it's got a thousand five millibars so the surface low is not nearly as deep as uh, the gfs and therefore it doesn't have nearly the cold cold core loft uh and to bring any snow uh with it uh, whatsoever and then the latest nam model this is your short range nam model into uh into that friday friday morning time frame it's got a little bit again this 540 low is right along the texas panhandle but it is going to be break shows it's breaking out some snow into portions of missouri and the portions of uh, illinois as that that same system will be continued to ride up the coast of the northeast it's more or less is going to fizzle itself out uh, but here's the temperatures at that same time frame with the nam is where it's showing some of that snow and and look at that guys i mean it's 34 33 degrees 33 degrees so yeah not out of the question it can snow at 33 34 35 degrees but that's the joys of uh, predicting snow in the month of march because there's not much normally a lot much cold air to speak of and you get these you know 34 35 36 degrees wet snow so yes it could it could snow in some of these areas but 
it's you know it's gonna melt as soon as it hits the ground if it happens to do that but yeah we could we could be getting a little surge of uh not arctic air by any stretch of the imagination but some colder air uh filtering in on the north side of that surface low would brings uh you know 20s for the texas panhandle where it's going to be snowing into the rockies back into the 20s uh you know 20s in kansas so that'll be a big drastic little bit change you know from the 50s you're experiencing uh today this afternoon you know into into portions of uh, montana but yeah so as the, the southeast featured and back into friday again it's just a very active setup guys that that deepening trough that's over texas on thursday will swing across the south again and yeah we're talking to talking about more severe weather for portions of new orleans back into mobile back into tallahassee and to columbus here so yeah we have another round and these could be on the stronger side uh by then it's actually tapping into some of that uh more gulf moisture the a little bit higher dew points at the time of day this is looks to be a, a more or less into the daytime hours so they're taking advantage of peak heating by then so that makes a big difference on the storm so definitely be on the lookout on the day on uh, on friday but yes <laughs> it doesn't stop there because now it's our all our attention turned out to the west coast again where we have yes yet another deepening trough that's really going to be developing uh, by the time we get into that Saturday time frame with more colder air and actually more beneficial rains heading back off the West Coast. So we've got more rain for really like Seattle and Portland where they technically don't need any rain, but they're going to get more rain. But we definitely take, need more rain in California. That's for sure. And there's the Intermountain Snows and the higher elevation is going to be bringing back uh, the snows for that area. But even as we dive into the day on uh, on Sunday time frame, that continues to dive off the coast. So yes, the further it south it gets, uh, the, the the rain showers do time do tend to twin, dwindle, or as you get towards the uh, southern California. But we got some snows breaking out in Nevada, back into the Rockies again, into uh, Idaho, into Montana with that second feature that's going to be diving down into the Intermountain West through through the rockies again and really starting to amplify as we get into that monday time frame with yet yes another bowling ball type trough going to be setting up with all that clash of well above average temperature anomalies and we got a very deepening dynamic low pressure system and this one could be even bigger than the the last two that what we've seen so all this all this even this far out a lot of the dynamics are really starting to come together here because this could be a big event over several days because we've got yes a very deepening trough setting up over uh portions of the west coast getting into uh, the, the, the southwest here and there's the surface low there's the surface low heading over o over the rockies and out ahead of it you got the strong southwest winds is going to be pulling in uh, some of that moisture and all the higher dew points by then we've got cape values probably at, at some of the highest levels we've actually seen so far this uh, spring season and this could be a pretty dynamic setup as we get into that monday time frame and look at that i mean even the storm prediction center is already feeling that confident even this far out talking about six days guys this is Tuesday, where this is Monday, right? This is Monday, and they already feel confident, say, this is gonna be a, at least a slight risk for severe weather into uh, San Antonio, into Austin, into Waco, back into Lufkin, Shreveport, portions of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, as we, yes, we have that really massive deepening trough setting up. And there's the Cape values, your convective available potential energy. Uh, the last event was more or less into the thousand range. This is double. This is double that. So this is definitely the higher, uh, it's high of uh, instability we've seen so far uh, this spring season. So that, I think that's why they're pretty much confident enough to, hey, well, let's go ahead and put a slight risk and uh, for severe weather even this far out. But it looks to be some really beneficial rains uh, for portions of Texas. But I'm very concerned about this setup for severe weather as this goes into that Monday uh tuesday time frame is yes that bowling ball ball you know ball trough will keep extending and uh, pushing off uh, to the east and we're really honestly once it taps into that gulf of mexico moisture i mean those these temperatures are well above average out here 
yeah, that's going to be setting up all the ingredients in place to continue that severe weather into portions of the southeast. And yeah, day eight, guys, that's seven days away and, and they still even have a slight risk. So it's, it's very rare you see something like this uh, that far out. So that's why you get concerned uh, with even, you know, the, 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 the possibilities of this severe weather setup and how, how great it looks this far out of all the pieces of the puzzle gonna be coming together uh, to set up a pretty you know, significant event. So definitely highlight uh, these areas on Monday and Tuesday uh, timeframe. And we'll fine tune this at, in, the, in the days ahead and, uh, and see, watch all the dynamics really start to come together. But right now we're confident enough to say, hey, there's at least a slight risk for severe weather extending back into New Orleans through Mo Mobile again and heading up into the uh, the Birmingham, uh, Alabama area. But here's the drought situation, right? So, I mean, here's the drought situation off the West Coast. I mean, where they're getting the atmospheric river, technically they're right at where they should be this time of year. So technically they don't really need any rain, but they definitely need rain further south into Oregon and to uh, much of uh, California and obviously the desert Southwest and really much of Texas has been really bone dry and much of the West. So really the areas that are actually getting the precipitation over the next seven days, a lot of the precipitation are the same areas that really, really need it desperately the most. Uh, and here's the, here's the actual precipitation amount. So yeah, we've got that atmospheric river continuing to flow off the Pacific Northwest. That's gonna be pummeling that region. There's the beneficial rains, at least for Northern California. I wish we could have some or for Southern California, but that's just not the case. But still, we get sporadic showers in and around the desert Southwest and uh, through the Rockies. And a lot of this is gonna be in the form of snow where it is gonna be a little bit cold enough. But there's the beneficial rains gonna be impacting the drought stricken areas of parts of Texas and really Oklahoma and Kansas. And uh, technically even Louisiana is, could need some beneficial rains back into Arkansas, into Missouri. And this, these same systems will continue to traverse across uh, the southeast of these very active setups. So you've got the one going through this right now. You have another one coming through that Thursday, Friday time frame. And then yet we have another system that's going to be going through Monday and Tuesday for these same areas. So it's very active over this part of the country for the next uh, seven days. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after storms.